I just finished putting this vinyl floor in our RV. Stick around, I'll show you how I did it. My wife and I are currently in the process of renovating our Class A motorhome. When we bought it, it already had wood flooring in it that wasn't factory, but it had damage from the slide and we weren't particularly fond of the color. So we decided to replace it. The first step is obviously to remove the existing floor. So first I went around, threw out the rig, and removed all the trim and baseboard. Once I had all that up, I started pulling up the floor in the back bedroom and worked my way towards the front. All the boards came up by hand and I didn't really need any tools to get them up. Once they were all up, I started pulling out the underlayment. And as I started getting into the bathroom area, I started noticing a dark area in the subfloor. Once I got up to the toilet area, then I knew we were in trouble. There was a lot of mold and moisture all over the subfloor. I continued in the kitchen area and hit some spots where the padding beneath the wood was stuck to the floor. However, there was no moisture or mold there, which led us to believe it came from some sort of spill. The main living area went pretty quick with no issues until I hit the driver area. There I found a lot more moisture under the dash and all around the driver's seat. We already knew we had some leaky windows due to some clogged weep holes and some bad outer seals, which we had already fixed shortly before we started the flooring process. However, we weren't aware that that much water had already got in and that much mold had already started to form. Initially, it looked like we were gonna have to be replacing a lot of the subfloor. We turned down the AC and put some large damp rid containers in the rig to help absorb the moisture. We put things on hold for a while and let the RV sit for just about a week. Once everything had dried out, we were happy to learn that the damage wasn't as bad as we thought it was. We weren't going to have to replace any, any of the flooring. We were just going to have to do a lot of cleaning and some treatment. To begin the mold treatment process, there are two items that you absolutely have to have. You have to have a mask and you have to have gloves. There's no if, ands, or buts about this. Mold is not something that you want to mess with. The other thing that I had is I also had some throwaway clothes that might have been overkill, but I figure better safe than sorry. The next thing you'll need is a small bucket or a mixing bowl. I used an old mixing bowl from the house uh, and that you're going to put your solution in. You also need a good sturdy brush. I use this one. As you can see, it's got some real thick grit on there. Really get in there. So um, I highly recommend this bad boy. It worked out for me. For the solution in the toilet area, I used a 50-50 combo of hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar. This worked out very well, but by the time I was done cleaning that area and ready to move on to the driver's side, I was already out of solution. So I decided to research and find out how pertinent that hydrogen peroxide was and found out that hmm, maybe not so much. The white vinegar is definitely the key element. I used just the white vinegar on the driver's side, worked just as well. So I recommend going with the vinegar. So once I have the solution in my bowl, I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna dip it in there and really saturate the floor, scrubbing really, really good. And with every area that you see that grime pulling up, just wipe it off with some uh, of the paper towels and throw those in the garbage bag and keep on going until you have uh, covered and treated the entire area. Set up a fan, walk away for a couple hours, Come back and you'll be amazed by the results. I know I was. Once we had the mold cleaned up, we decided we were going to take some preventative measures in order to ensure that we weren't ever going to have to worry about any mold again should some water happen to find its way into the rig. We bought some Zinsir Mold Killing Primer, which is a Rust-Oleum product, and painted the entire subfloor from back to front. We let that dry for about 24 hours. Then we bought some bare mold-resistant patio paint and put a coat of that over the primer and gave that another 24 hours of dry. It took exactly one gallon of each to do the whole floor with a very thick napped roller. For the floor, we used Life Proof Chiffon Lace Oak Vinyl Plank Flooring from Home Depot. 
It is very important to note that this product is not recommended for RVs as it needs to be in a climate controlled environment. We chose to go with this product anyway because we're going to be living in our rig full time and then the climate will always be controlled. We like this product because it is lighter and thinner than our existing flooring and it doesn't require any underlayment. However, if you are not a full-time RVer and your rig spends any time in storage, this would not be a good product to use. That being said, we ended up using 246 square feet of planks, which came out to be 13 boxes at about $60 each. So with tax and my veteran discount, it came out to be about $750 for all the flooring. And I had just enough scrap left over to do the stairs. I started the floor in the very back driver's side corner and started working my way down the line from there. The bathroom area was the most difficult as it had a lot of tricky angles to cut. Once I made my way out to the kitchen and living area, things went much faster. Product instructions say that the planks can be scored with a razor and snapped by hand, but I just ended up using a jigsaw with a PVC blade to do most of my cuts, and I also used a circular saw with a plastic blade to do some of the long straight cuts. The other tools I used were a digital protractor, a quick square, pencil, tape measure, and a soft hammer along with a floor and installation kit. I already had all of the tools and I borrowed the installation kit, so none of that cost me anything. Whereas the floor in our rig had already been replaced when we bought it, the slide still had its original factory carpeting. Pulling that out was pretty easy and straightforward. Once it and the padding were out, I was left with a clean surface that had a plastic lip for the slide transition. I got some plastic boards that were the same thickness as the plastic transition lip and cut them to fit in order to have a smooth surface for the flooring. Instead of beginning in the back corner, I started directly on the transition lip and worked my way towards the wall. I did this because I wanted full planks along the transition. I also used construction adhesive to secure the first row of planks to the transition. Technically, this is a floating floor and is not supposed to be secured, but during my research, I had seen other people had done it this way and it worked out for them, so I figured I'd give it a try. After the adhesive had set on the first row, the rest went down really fast. Since the vinyl planks that we put down were significantly thinner than the wood planks that we pulled up, there was a noticeable gap between the slide and the floor itself. I struggled for a while trying to come up with a solution as to what I could put here, and then I finally realized that the metal stair edging that I had got for the stairs coming into the RV just happened to perfectly fit with the right amount of distance to cover that gap. So I laid each piece and marked the holes, then I pre-drilled the holes through the planks and the plastic lip underneath. I used a countersink bit to taper the holes on the trim so the screws would sit a little more flush. I ran a bead of adhesive, placed the trim, and screwed it in place with some flat top screws. I'm really happy with how the slide turned out. Before putting on the metal trim, there was a lot of give whenever you stepped on the lip transition here. But once I put the trim into place, now everything's nice and solid and there's no more play. I'm so excited to take you guys on another tour. We've made so much progress since the last time we took a little trip together, so I'm pretty excited to show you. As usual, we'll start from the front, work our way back. So clearly we're gonna start with the flooring here. It is stunning. We also finished the trim, and you'll see this aluminum stair edge. This provides a clear separation of the two, um, two areas. And it also provides additional support on the slide um, as you're stepping up into it. I also wanted to show you guys these guys here. Um, so these are called slide out slickers. And we use those when we're pulling in the slide to ensure that um, there's no damage to the floor. So far, we've used them a couple of times and they've worked out great. 
You'll also see that on this back wall, we installed a uh, wood paneling and the chair rail. And what I love about this is that it really shows the color flowing throughout from the very beginning to the back. We extended that into the toilet area. So our accent color, as you can see, is aqua. Another rug in the living area that brings in that color. And our shower curtain has aqua in it as well. And of course, our bedspread. We also installed this beautiful headboard. And of course, what? I love it. We got our mattress from Wilderness RV Mattress Company and we ordered an Olympics, Olympic queen size, which goes out an additional three inches on either side to um, utilize all the space in between the two nightstands. Uh, also accent uh, color is in the curtains. The curtains are another story, totally different saga. We'll go into that in another time. But needless to say, these are the curtains that we have selected. Uh, this is only one panel. There'll be more coming. And of course, you'll be seeing that. So what is next up for Legally Homeless and our RV renovations? Well, I'll tell you. It's the sofa. And it's going to be here tomorrow. What? The next time we meet, there will be a sofa here and curtains hung. I know you are just as excited as I am. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful and mildly entertaining. Till next time, bye.